Hi everyone and welcome to this webinar. My name's Martin and we'll be joined later on by Karen who will do the Q&A afterwards. As always, I'd um, like to welcome everybody um, and hope you're all keeping well and safe. And I wanna go straight to our um, little screenshot. If you have questions, please ask them during the webinar. Um, there's the uh, little link there when you click the button. You can add your questions there. Um, because when we get to the end of the webinar, when I introduce Karen to um, ask or, or tell me what the questions are, we'll stop taking them at that point. Okay, um, what we will be doing in this um, webinar is, here is a little sample of the project. Now, the webinar is all about size and positioning. Um, so here we've got some borders that are responsive. Um, we've got a menu that's got set, set pixel distance from top and bottom, but is responsive in the middle. There we go. And then we'll be showing how to add a map um, that it's a fixed size, but has a full screen button that when clicked, the menu hides or, or the, yeah, the menu hides and then the map becomes responsive as well. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Right, so with that said, let's crack on. So first things then is let's open up Pano 2 VR and add my images. So I'm gonna to go to the input and add images, desktop and map and menu, and select the images I'm going to add. Here we go, quick. So they're all loaded and that's that. And what I wanna do is just change the default view for this image. So I'm just gonna whiz it around in the viewer. I'm gonna right button click and set the default view and that's done. So now if you ever wanna to go to the default view, just right button click, go to default view and you're there. Okay, I'm gonna add an HTML5 output and I'm just gonna build this so it's nice and quick. So just, just save that and here we go. Okay, right, now I'm gonna add a skin. Now, what I wanna start off with is adding um, the images to make the border. So here we go, I'm gonna select them all and just drag them into the skin, okay into the skin editor. Now here are my images, they're SVGs and they're all white. So what I'm gonna do is select them all and so we can all see them easily, I'm gonna change their color. So open up the color tool, you can see SGV fill element. I can double click and select a color. I'm gonna make them red so they're nice and bright. Click apply and now my SVGs are all nice and red. Right, I'm gonna just label these um, so I know which one's what. So this is gonna be my top right. Um, next one down is going to be top left. Next one down is going to be bottom right. And then finally, bottom left. There we go. Now, this is about positioning. Now, these are going to be our corner borders. So what I want to do is I'm going to select the top right one first. And if we have a look, we've got this anchoring. Um, so I'm going to anchor it top right and as soon as I click that you can see the arrow um, uh, icons so here you can see this particular is 389 pixels from the right hand side if I was to set that to zero you'll see it jumps to the right and again I've got how many pixels it is from the top so if I set that to zero then they all get built or rather it'll get, it will get it gets positioned where I want it to be if I open up the preview you can see it's anchored there in the top right, and no matter the window size, you'll see it stays there. Now what I can do is actually select all of these. Uh, actually no, what I'll do first of all is like top left. Um, so I'm gonna anchor that one top left. I'm gonna anchor this one bottom right and anchor this one bottom left, okay? So now what I should be able to do is select them all and set the X and Y position to zero, zero. Because they're set their anchor points, they'll all jump to exactly where I want them to. And there you go. You've got your anchor points set there. And when I move the window, those elements will stay anchored in those particular corners. Right, so what I wanna do now is add um, top, bottom, and left and right um, window frame. All right, so I'm gonna use the uh, rectangle tool for this. 
and I'm going to call this um, BT, so border top. I'm going to make it uh, its position 0, 0, so it's top left. Uh, it's anchored top left. I'm going to make its width 100%. I'm going to make its height. I really want it 5 pixels. Okay, so that's that one. Um, and then what I'm going to do is change its color to red so it matches our little borders. And I'm going to remove the border. Okay. So when I've done that, I can select the element. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut. Um, I'm on the Mac, so Command-C would be Control-C on the PC. And I'm just going to Command-V or Control-V to paste it in. So I've made a copy. And now this is going to be um, border um, bottom, so BB. All right. So what I'm going to do with this one is anchor that to the bottom left and set that to zero pixels. And that's now down there. OK, so I'm just now going to do the same for the left and right. So here is my uh, um, I'm going to make this my left border. So um, so let's just do border left. And I'm going to set that to zero, zero pixels. It's anchored top left. This time around, the width is going to be five pixels, but the height is going to be 100 percent. It stays with the window. And again, I'm going to set its color to red and I'm going to remove the border. All right. So once we've got that, I'm going to do the same thing as we did before. Copy and paste the element. And this is now going to be border right. And that will be on the top right. And again, we'll zero, zero. Uh, there. Right. OK. Um, border right. OK. I've got that already. So that's that's why I've got this little warning sign. I wonder why I got that. Yeah, it's because I've used the border right for the um, corner. All right. But let's let's just click this little warning triangle, because what that will do is it will add an underscore one. If I had another border rectangle and I got the water uh, warning triangle when I clicked it, it would have added a, an underscore two. The idea is so it helps you so you don't end up having duplicated IDs within your skin. Right. So now that's all done. If we have a look at it, you'll see that the borders are actually quite thick and they cover up the um, the corners. So what I'm going to do is select all the corners. And I'm going to set them five pixels out either way. So the X and the Y brings them in. And now we have our nice little border. So if I now publish this, so close, save, um, save the skin to my folder. Let's just call this skin. Um, there's Pano 2 VR is at the bottom here. Here we go. Let's maximize that. And let's build the output. And there it is. So this is our borders and it's all responsive and we'll stay with the window. All right. OK. Now, whilst we're on about anchoring and things like that, what I want to do is show you if I draw a square, let's make it. 200. By 200 pixels. So it's a square. I'm going to set the anchor point to the middle. And I'm going to set that to zero, zero. Now, if I open up the preview, you'll see that the rectangle is in the middle. If I change the anchor point, the rectangle doesn't move. And the reason being is because the skin and the and the um, and the preview are the same size. So it doesn't matter because I've not changed the size of the preview. It still appears to be in the center. But what we've done with changing the anchor point to the top left, I'm actually setting how many pixels it is from this top left of the element to the top left of the skin. So now when I change the skin size, he says, you'll see that the rectangle indeed maintains this distance. So this is what this anchoring is all about. So if I was to now set the anchor to the center, you'll see that it now jumps back to the center of the skin. If I set it for top right, it will then have this fixed size from the top right. So this is why it's important to get anchoring correct. Now, as another little um, uh, thing to show you about this, 
he says, um, let's reduce that size. Okay, I'm going to leave that top left. I'm going to make another copy of this. Um, move that over there and just click that to make that a different one. And then what I'm going to do is get a container, draw a container around it, make the container fairly large. He says, um, let's uh, 200 by 200. There go. There's our container. I'm going to um, position the elements in there. Now, these are set for top left. I'm going to set the container um, to be using percentages. All right. So let's leave that as percentages and open the preview window. Now you can see that those two rectangles, because they're anchored top left, they're keeping the same distance to the top left of that container, which obviously isn't moving. If I now change this one to the top right, what's going to happen is this, this rectangle is going to stay, stay to the top right of the um, container, and this one will stay to the top left. So again, let's open that up and see that working. And you can see that. There you go. So this is, if you like, all about positioning and uh, the elements. And because one of the things that, you know, sometimes I get is on support is, you know, I've put elements into the skin and they're not where they where where I want them on the output. Well, this is what's going on. It's how you anchor them. Also, it's here. We've got another anchor point for scaling. So as a as a tip, if I was to just delete all this because I don't want that. Um, what I'm going to do is add a rectangle there and I'm going to set its scale to 90. Oh, no, let's, let's do 50. Okay. And let's just open up the uh, preview and you can see that we've reduced it down, but we've reduced it evenly from all edges. So it's reduced to the center because the anchor points in the center. So if this was going to be an element that I wanted to reduce but stay in its relative position, I would then use the anchor point there. As you can see, it's now jumped back to the same distance in the canvas, skin canvas, as it is on the output. All right, so you've, you've got two anchor points. One is for the positioning and one is for the scaling. All right, so that's, uh, that's another little one. Right, okay. What I'm going to do is just hide all these elements in the... Um, skin so I've got another blank canvas to work with and what I'm going to do now is introduce you to so what what we call um, raw CSS and you've probably noticed in the uh, skin if I add a map here we go so let's just add a map element I'm going to make this um, 200 by 100 pixels I'm going to position it 10 pixels from the left, 10 pixels down. Okay. And what I want to do with this is change its scaling, as I showed you before. So what I'm going to do is minimize this so I can get to my graphics. And I'm going to select these three, because this is what I'm going to be using for this particular task. So there's all my three graphics. Um, I'm going to select them all, because I want them all to be 32 pixels big. So let's just... 32 by 32. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, hmm. okay. That one didn't go. Right, so 32 by 32. Uh, there we go. Right, okay. And this one is going to be to, um, so, button, app, and I'm going to anchor that bottom left. So about 10 pixels out from the left and then 10 pixels up from the bottom. There we go. Right. So that's that. And this button is going to mouse click. I'm going to get it to change the alpha. So I'm going to get it to toggle the alpha over, um, I don't know, a second period. That'll do or half a second period. And, um, and it will toggle the map. I'm going to leave that blank for the minute because I've not, sort of um, finished actually with the map. I've actually stepped ahead of myself. But um, with the map, if I just uh, just go back to that, apologize for that, I'm going to select the container and draw a container around the map. And this is now, I'm just going to call this container map. Now, the thing is, 
why I'm drawing a container around a map. A map element is quite special. It's an element that brings in an image. So if I wanted to put a button that appears over the top of the map, say in one corner, if I was to do that directly in the map element, when we show the map in the map elements like the Google map or the floor plan or whatever, if I'm using an API, it will cover the uh, button. So to stop that happening, what I'm going to do is put the buttons in a container so the map and the buttons are on the same level so the buttons don't become part of it. Now, um, I'm going to show you this, I think. So let's just do that. So if I put the button in the map and set that position to anchor top right so it's going to be here and then set that. If I open up the preview, you can see the map button's gone. It's vanished because the map itself, the map element will cover it regardless of where it is. But if I then put the map button above the map and show it, you'll see it's there. So this is the reason why I'm putting the map in the container. OK, now what I'm also going to do is put this other button in there as well. So let's do the same thing. OK, um, we're going to oh, put that. No, that was correct. We just need to move that into the map container because obviously with the anchoring, um, we're anchoring now from inside the container and not the skin. All right. So now these two buttons are on top of each other. Now, what's going to happen, as you saw at the start, is this, this map on click is going to expand. So I want to see this button first. So we're actually going to call this um, map app enter so it's map, map enter full screen all right so let's just reset those and that's going to be um i want a hand cursor on that and i also want it to be visible all right which it is the reduce or e exit full screen so let's just call this map um exit again i want a hand cursor but this time around i want it to be hidden okay so now when we look at this, you can see we've got our enter full screen button. Now, I haven't got an API in my map element, hence why we keep seeing this. So what I'm going to do is I do have a map element I'm going to add to the skin that's actually got an API key already inserted. Now, I only need a one map element with my API key in, so I'm going to hide that um, and make it not visible. So it's not going to be in the skin anymore, but when we open it up, we can now see the map without the um without it being broken or complaining that i've got no api all right okay so with that all done then um how i'm going to control this is with a variable i'm going to open and an, um, um, maximize and minimize the map using um a, a variable and some logic blocks so i'm going to create a variable and we're going to call this um uh, var underscore map okay I'm going to make it a boolean so it's true false and I'm going to set that to false okay all right okay so that's that done now if we go back to the map container this is where it's going to get interesting this is where we're going to introduce you to CSS now it's actually called raw CSS but we've just labeled these CSS now the thing to know about CSS is before, when we put an element in the skin and I change its values, so here, if I change the value here to say 100, you'll see it physically moves in the skin. When we've selected CSS, we can change this and it will not move. So if I change that to say 100 pixels, it's not going to make move. The other thing is as well, as you can see, I've got to now stipulate or specify rather, it's... Um, unit so now it's got to be pixels so of course that's not moved it's not worked so this is why it's important to position everything whilst you're using pixels before you go on to do this little trick now i say trick but this function so what we're going to do then is while we're at css we now have to specify our units so i'm going to go to the position um logic block and i'm going to say when the variable var map equals true i want it to be 10%. All right. So I'm going to give it a 10% um, uh, size all the way around. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing now with size, but this time around, I'm going to say when the variable uh, var equals true, make it 
80% of the size of the window. There we go. All right. That should now do that. But now what I've got to do is obviously give the instruction to the button for it to work. So I'm going to click on the container. Okay. And then I'm going to say in the container, that on mouse click, I want to set the variable value. And the variable value or the operation at the moment is set to true. So with this, if I was to click it, it will go to true. And I've got no way of bringing it back. So I'm going to change the operation to a not. Now, in simple terms, this is a toggle. So if it's true, it's not false, make it false. If it's false, it's not true, make it false or true. So it's it's just a not. So it's a, it's a toggle. So that's what we want. And as a helper, this is a little tip fresh from the um, hop key. Here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a text box. And I'm going to delete the text in the text box. And I'm going to use the insert placeholder button. And I'm going to select variable and select that variable that we've done and the idea is I'm going to get that to tell me what the variable value is so if I anchor that top uh, right it will stay at the top right and it can and you can see now that that variable value is at false all right okay if I now click this button it's going to true and the map pops out if I click it again it goes back to false now did we all spot the mistake um, now I, I this is uh, something that I've planned to show. This wasn't a mistake, but um, what I wanted to show was we've actually worked on the maps container to make it responsive. What we didn't do was work on the map itself. The map is still at its fixed pixel size. So what we need to do now to make this work is set the map to 100%. All right. Now, the mere fact that it was the same size as the container, changing it to percentage takes it to 100% straight away all right so that's all done so now when we go um let's let's see what this looks like actually in the output so let's go back to pano 2 vr open that up um i'm going to use the keyboard shortcuts um option command g so it's control uh, alt g on the pc to generate the output click the button and there it is there is our our map and when we click it it expands pops out and when we click it it pops back again so here it's a fixed, fixed pixel size. When we click it, it's now taking the percentage. So it's making it responsive. All right. Now, obviously, this is just shifting or, or rather it's just um, uh, going for two different sizes without any transitions. If I go back to the skin, what I can do is go back to the logic blocks and just add a transition. So it's one second. And that's all I'm going to do is add the transition. OK. So with that done, if I just open up the preview, if I click the full screen button, you can now see the transition effect. Here we go. So that's transitioning our uh, map. Now, just to finish this off, what I'm going to do is click on the map button. Now, as I said before, we are going to, uh, we, we started to give it an action of mouse click, toggle element visibility, um, and it's going to be for the container that's the map. So now I just need to select the container, set, set itself down to zero. So now what happens is when we click the button, we see the map hide and show. And we can now click it and we can still hide and show it. So it stays in its last state that it was in. There we go. So that's um, building that um, map. Um, and with our little helper, you can see that it's in its true state so i know it's it's in its full full screen mode if you like and when i click that it goes back to a false using these little um uh, text boxes to see what variable values are at the time is a great way of debugging if you're doing a lot of um, variables and logic blocks but once you're done you can just select it and delete and that's job done right okay um Okay, right. Okay. Um, just have a look here. Uh, just make sure I've not missed anything. No, we're all good. Right. Okay. So moving on then. Right. Next thing I want to look at is creating a menu um, that's going to have these fixed borders, top and bottom. 
Ah, right. Okay. Before I do, <laughs> good point. Uh, Thomas has just given me a nudge. Um, my bu map buttons don't change. And that's really simple to do. I thought I was looking at something. I thought I'd missed something. That's why I went back to it. But anyway, the map buttons don't change. But because we're using a variable to toggle um, uh, or an action to toggle the variable, I can use this variable in my logic block. So on this, um, so on the map um, exit or uh, so exit full screen, I can give it the variable that when the map is true, this will become visible. All right. So when we're in full screen, this icon will become visible. And this one, it will be when the variable is true, the button will become false. There we go. So now what we should have is the full screen button clicking it and we now got the exit full screen button here we go good right now i can move on cool so let's just um hide all of those again i like to hide everything so i've got a nice blank ca canvas to work with um so what i want to do now is just build quickly a menu so i'm going to grab a scroll area um let's make it I don't know 150 pixels wide and i'm going to make it um let's make it 100 percent tall all right and then we're going to anchor it zero zero so it's anchored top of the corner so there it is and it's going to be um because it's 100 pixels tall it's going to be responsive okay so i'm now going to make the menus and the way i'm going to do that is just grab a text box this will be my button. Um, I'm just going to set the text box text. So I'm going to use the insert placeholder to use um, user data title. All right. So it's going to pick up the title of each of the of the um, images. And I'm going to add a cloner because I want to clone this for all of the input images. I'm adding a cloner. And if we look here, the cloner's cloning out horizontally. I want it to clone vertically. So you do that by clone direction set to vertical and you can see it now going upwards so up and down all right now the um, text box um, i'll leave it at 100 same as the cloner and what i'm going to do is to, we're just going to call the cloner um menu cloner and we'll just call this uh this button let's just call it mode a new node right i'm now going to drag the text box and make it a child of the cloner and i can just set the x and y positions to zero zero so it's now part of it okay i'm now going to drag the cloner into the scroll area so let's just call the scroll area um new scroll area all right and we're going to drag that in there and i'm going to set um its position to zero zero in fact, what I may do is just set that to 10 pixels wide. Okay, so now what we should have is all of these, um, the text boxes have been cloned to show all of the um, nodes in the tour. Now, I don't really have enough nodes in this tour, so what I am going to do um, is just close the skin for the second. Um, and I'm going to select all of these nodes. I'm going to make sure that I'm in, pan uh, in, in the panorama viewer mode. And I'm just going to drag a couple more instances of these nodes in there just to give me a few more nodes to play with with the menu. So let's just export this. Won't take long. And when that's done, we'll go back into the skin and you should see there's a um, basically the cloner is is cloning all these new nodes that we've put in as well. So let's have a quick look. And there they are. So they're, they're, they're all there. OK, now what I want to do is to tidy this up a little bit more is that the cloner and the text box are the same size. If I add a little bit more um, height to the cloner, you'll see I'm going to add a bit of a gap there. And that gap is now going to be seen throughout all the buttons. All right. And again, I'm, I've said buttons. I've called them buttons. What I need it to do then is to do something so again i'm going to give it the the text box because that's what we're going to be clicking the action of mouse click open next panorama it's going to be opening the hotspot url 
and I'm just going to leave it at default view. OK, so that's what that's going to do. If I now go back to the uh, preview, you can see we says uh, net node one. And as I click through the menu, you can see that the node is changing. So we know that that's now working. OK, right. And if I go back to the preview, if we now minimize this, you can see that we've got the scroll area working there as well. Now, I've got a bit of an issue with this, and that is if we have a look at the output, um, you can see that it's pushed right up against the side and it's pushed right up against the top. So if I was now to show my map, my map would be interfering with this section of the menu. And the other thing is I can't see my map button at the bottom. OK, so what I'm going to do is we're going to use um, the uh, uh, another CSS size trick. So I'm going to select the scroll area and the height is set to 100 percent. So what I'm going to do is, well, first and foremost, I'm going to move it out by five uh, pixels because that's how big the border is. So that's actually let's do 10 pixels from the side and then I'm going to set its height. Now I'm going to use. CSS. Now, again, when we select CSS, you've got to remember that whatever you change here now is not going to reflect in the skin. You will only see it in the output or the preview. And I'm going to use this calc. All right. And I'm going to use open and close brackets. And what I'm going to say is I want it to be. 100 percent. So that's how big I want the actual menu. But then I'm going to give it a minus. So I'm going to say, right, minus, um, let's do 20. All right. But I've got to specify PX because don't forget CSS, we now have to specify the units. If I open this up, you'll see that I'm at the top, but I'm now up from the bottom by 20 pixels. OK, so if I now change the size of the display, regardless of the size of it, will always 20 pixels up from the bottom. OK, now this is where it gets interesting, because what I'm going to say now is, right, OK, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it down. Um, let's just say, uh, I don't know, 100 pixels from the top. If I now say, right, I've gone down 100 pixels. If we have a look at the um, show off canvas, you can see this is the bottom of the skin editor and you can see that it's still 100%, but because I've shifted it down, it's now falling off the bottom of the skin. OK, so what I can do is say, if I go minus 100 pixels, open up the preview, it's now back to where it was. We've gone down 100 pixels and we've come up 100 pixels, so it's now sitting at the bottom. OK, and again, if I move it around, it's all responsive. But I want it slightly higher. So what I'm going to say is, right, well, my button is, I don't know, 32 pixels and I've got uh, 10 pixels. So let's just do 50. Um, I'm now coming up 150 pixels. And here it is. It's now come up and that little bit more. So I can now click and you've got my map. In fact, that's just a little bit too high. So if I move that down to, say, 30, see that now covers that. And if I now come back up to say, I don't know, let's do 70, a little bit more. That's not quite enough. That's the good thing about the preview as well, with the preview showing and you're adjusting uh, figures in the skin, you can see a live preview of it. All right, so here we go. That's just where we were. We've got our menu there that's now responsive to the size, but we've got this fixed distance. So you could have a logo at the top or a logo at the bottom or your buttons at the bottom here and your menu now will not interfere with it. So let's just um, save the skin, generate the output. Um, he says, uh, where's my, uh, all right, it's hiding. Here it is. So here is the output and you can see there's the menu. Um, you see the scroll bars when it reduces. It's looking a bit ugly and it's looking a bit ugly because the scroll area, I've left it um, with its uh, background. So if I was to take the background away, let's look at the preview. You'll see that it's gone. It's got the border. If I remove the border, there we go. That's looking a bit better already. There we go. So that's 
that's basically positioning and everything to do with the menu right okay what i want to do now um is just show you some little tricks uh with um positioning um or using uh, a container and um a menu and how to hide and show this now what i'm going to do here is just um what am i going to do what i'm going to do how i'm going to go forward right i think i'll start a new skin actually feeling brave um and let's just save that straight away so file save um, let's take it to the project folder and call that skin two Right. So I'm just going to make quickly a menu, all right, as we did before. So that is going to be a scroll area. Let's make that um, uh, 100 pixels wide. No, let's make that 200 pixels wide and 300 pixels. Um, oh, sorry. 100 pixels wide and 300 pixels long. There we go. Let's position that and set that for, I don't know, 20... 20 pixels from the edge okay all right so that's my um scroll area i'm going to make the menu then so let's do as we did before here's my text box let's make it uh 150 pixels wide i'm going to grab a scroll area make that 150 pixels uh wide okay change the scroll direction so let's go to vertical I'm now going to make uh, the text box. I'm not going to change anything here. We've already we've already gone through changing ID. So I'm just doing this purely for speed. So I'm moving now the text box, which will be the button into the cloner and set that to zero, zero. Um, again, I'm going to make the cloner a few more pixels um, higher to give you me that little extra gap between the text box and the next one. So let's have a look at the preview where we are with this. So there's all the text boxes. All right. Um, the text box, obviously, I want to give it the um, the name of the individual node. So again, we're going to erase the text for the text box. I'm going to use the insert placeholder button. Go down to user data, insert title. There we go. So again, now that's now showing the title of all the nodes. Um, again, I would give it the action. I'm not going to bother again purely for speed because I want to because what I want to do is show you positioning for hiding and showing a menu. So not really about its function. But what we're going to do now is drag the cloner into the scroll area and set its position to zero zero. All right. Um, when we have a look at that, you can see there is the menu there. All right. Now. What I'm going to do to hide and show this is use a container. Now, a container is a fantastic element. And again, what I'm going to do is make this the same size. So um, in fact, what I could do is just select the container and draw around this and it adds it straight away. Or I could have drawn it out and set the size manually. But here is my container. All right. And what we're going to do with the container is it has this little property called masking. And when I select masking, what's going to happen is anything outside of the container's um, uh, area will be hidden, hence masked. So and we only see what we can see inside. Now, obviously, this only affects child elements. As you can see, the container is the parent element. The scroll area now or my menu is now the child element. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a variable to the skin. I'm just going to call it... Um, you again it's going to be a true false and i'm going to set it to false okay now what i'm going to do is set the scroll area and i'm going to set its distance to 300 pixels down all right i have a look at the preview you can't see it because it's now outside of the area of this masking container but i'm now going to add a button so let's just add a, a text box and just anchor it um, top right. Uh, let's just call it button. Or I'll give it the text that says button. And what I'm going to do is give this the action to toggle my variable. So mouse click, set variable value. And again, I'm using the not for a toggle. OK, and as a helper, I'm going to add another text box underneath it and set that to show the variable value so I know what's going on, 
All right, so there's my variable that I made. And there we go. So if I now open this up, you can see my button changes to true false. Okay, cool. What I'm going to do now is with the scroll area, I'm going to give it a position logic block. And I'm going to say that when the variable menu equals true, bring that back to zero. And I'm going to give it a transition so it doesn't just appear. It's going to slide up and take a second to do it. Okay, so let's do that. And there we go. There's our menu. And we've got this slide in and out effect. Okay, cool. Uh, the other thing is, is that the um, container is permeable. And what that means is um, that it's a, not an active element. So let's just export this. And you can see I can drag and click the panorama around the area. Nothing happens. When I click the button, it's now an active element. And it can, well, if I'd set the actions to change the nodes, it would change the nodes. Right, but this is the great thing about it. It's permeable, it's not there, it's physically not in the skin until you show something. All right, cool. Now, as I say, what I wanted to do um, is I worked out the other day, it was basically a customer request, and uh, they gave me, say, like, can you make a, a, a menu reveal itself rather than slide in and out, but just a reveal? So, this was the task that I was given. So, here it is. What I'm going to do then is we're going to move the container. Um, up. I'm going to move it up to minus 280 pixels. So now you can see that the um, because I'm showing all off canvas elements, it's showing um, that the container is mainly off the off the skin canvas. And we've only got this little bit. So if I just go actually turn that off, so you can see what's going on. All right. So this is the um, container. Now, as it stands, the button will then toggle this menu up and down inside the container. But what I'm going to do with the container, I'm going to give it a position logic block. So when that um, variable equals true, I'm going to set this to 20 pixels. I'm also going to give it the transition as well. Now, this is the clever bit. What's going to happen now is on button click and we change the variable value, right? The inside scroll area is going to scroll up to zero and the container is going to scroll down. So what we should end up with is this reveal. There we go. So that's the piosta resistance, as they say. And yeah, this was the little trick. Um, for just hiding and showing a menu and it's it's a reveal. It's not a slide or anything like that. So it's quite a good little uh, trick there for hiding and showing. Right. Well, I think I'm just about done with um, the uh, webinar. And that's I think that covers most things about positioning and 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 uh, uh, size and using the CSS and the little things you have to remember. So um, with that, um, I'm going to hand you over to Karen, who's going to shout out and give us um, any questions that you guys have answered and hopefully I can answer. So over to you, Karen. Hello, hello, hello. 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 So um, there aren't that many questions. We've got one um, from Inc. S. Um, I think what you've done is you've just entranced us all. I've been sitting here staring and <laughs> at that. So, um, uh, and so Ink says, uh, can the masking container be used to hide the ugly scroll bar? How can you? Yeah, absolutely. Or you can just turn it off. I mean, <laughs> that would probably be the easiest thing to do. So if you had the ugly scroll bar, um, we could go down to um, and just turn them off like that. If we do that, uh, let's just save and export. Um, there's the button. Boff. There's no scroll bar, so it's gone. But obviously, um, when you minimise, you can't see it and you can't do anything with it, and it won't scroll. Um, so on that happy little note, then, then it will be. You do need it. So let's put the vertical uh, scroll bar back in, um, or let's put it back to auto. Um, but yeah, you could. So if I got the container and I'm going to let's just show it's off uh, off canvas view. I can reduce its width and that should also do the same thing. So, yeah, you've hidden it. 
but of course you've got nothing to scroll if you haven't got a mouse um, you need to click on drag something then you've got nothing to show but yeah there you go that's it hidden by the container next karen yeah sorry sorry hi <laughs> um So, uh, sorry, these are just coming in. Um, I just want to say if anyone has any other questions, get them in now. Um, and uh, before we uh, um, end the webinar soon. But see, Seba has a question on, um, well, this, isn't, this just doesn't really go along with the position and um, anchoring theme, but I think maybe you can show this really quickly. Uh, which placeholder or, or element in this case do, do you use to show um, uh, thumbnails uh, rather than than the title? Ah, right. Okay, okay, okay. Right, that's that's uh, that's easy enough. Now, if you look, I'm using the cloner, and I'm cloning a text box. Okay. Now, if I wanted to use thumbnails, what we do is we use this little element here, and it's called add node image. So if I click that and click it, that's what it looks like. I'm going to hold the um, shift key and just drag the corner so I can move it with its aspect ratio kept. All right. And now all I need to do is make that a child of the cloner. And then let's position that. So let's position that zero, zero. Um, of course, the cloner has to be big enough to see it like that. I'm also going to get rid of this text box just to show you for this. So now what happens is um, as long as the, the node image doesn't have any specified image. So if we have a look at the node, uh, the node image properties, you can tell it to display an image or any of the images, right? Or if you clear it, what will happen is when it's in the cloner element, it will automatically generate and clone all of the images by itself. And there they are. All right. So, yeah. Obviously, you would sort out the um, spacing. I've just done this really quickly, but it is the node image that does all the magic in this case. Next. Sorry, I'm here. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> just takes a while to bring everything back into focus. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to call this. Uh, you're welcome, Seba. I'm going to call this the last two questions or let's say three questions so thank you guys for bringing in the questions um uh going back to ink <laughs> he he wonders if you can um he yeah he, he's one who asked about hiding the scroll bars and he asks if it can be done with web content too the web content scroll bars do you know that answer um no is yeah, the start okay. i'm say web content scroll well is this when we brought the web page into the container using an uh, uh, into the text box using an iframe, which we covered in the in one of the other webinars. Is this what we're I'm talking wondering. about? Maybe that's yeah. I mean, Maybe. if that's the case, then um, then it's the browser that's actually generating the scroll bars. Um, so it's not, it's not something that you I mean. Obviously, if if we made the text box smaller, then the browser just gets smaller in the text box. Mm -hmm. If we've set it to a hundred percent, so. I think not. I could be wrong, um, but I am. Um, but my clue is I'm going to say no. And and as Thomas has not sent me any messages to give me a kick in, I, I, I I'm assuming I'm right. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so Luca's asking if you can add um, if you can add a graphic behind the menu. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, basically, uh, with the scroll bar, I mean, let's let's add um, uh, a, a a rectangle, and what I'm going to do is add the rectangle to the container. Let's just set that to zero zero. Um, hang on, that was set to what three hundred, wasn't it? Okay, um, and let's set that rectangle to. Let's change its color to green. Okay, and then we can put the scroll bar on top of that and i can see the scroll bar itself the, the sorry the scroll bar the scroll area has got an embedded background color with so i can remove its border remove that and theoretically he says 
Um, why is it not showing? Uh, rectangle behind there. No, okay. Um, let me think. Let me think, let me think. The answer is yes, I've just got to remember how to do it. Um, but basically, container, scroll area. Oh, let's make that child of that. So there, that's, that's there, and then we can bring that on top. So it's just a case of positioning, and there we go. So that rectangle could have been an image, as you say, um, but obviously it needs to be 100% of the, 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 um, of the height. So we need to change that to percentage and 100% so it can stay with scroll area. There we go. So, yeah, you can. You can bring in elements. But, I mean, if it's an image, um, I think, theoretically, the image is going to have to be as long as the amount of options you've got in your menu. Because uh, if you do, obviously, have an image and you set um, a height of it and you scale it 100%, and you're going to stretch it out. So it's going to look pretty ugly. So, yeah, as long as it's a nice, tall image and it's the height of however many thumbnails you will have in your menu, then, yes, you can do it. Next. Mark calling also. Right. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> All right. So this is going to be the last question of today. And it really um, uh, it really doesn't have anything to do with positioning and anchoring, but it's an interesting question from Jonathan. So he says that um, he noticed that when you were dragging your nodes into Pano 2 VR, that it was adopting the naming convention of the panoramas into um, Pano 2 VR, but he says um, he's tried to drag his panos in and the name doesn't copy over. So he's wondering, is there some kind of setting that he's missing? No, what it is, um, let's let's go back then. So basically these images, um, uh, basically what we did is um, we've injected these images with the metadata and how I did that um, was basically because I've because I messed up on the first one. It says Park O One, but if you look, I accidentally set the the name to title to title where I should have set it to Pavilion, but we set it in. Uh, but I've set it into description anyway. But basically, what I've done was put all the panoramas in, set out all the um, user data, set in all the GPS locations, all that sort of stuff, and then I exported them um, using Pano Two VR. Um, you can select all of your panoramas, convert input. I converted them to JPEGs because JPEGs are a little bit lighter and load a bit quicker, um, so which is all right for um, the webinar. And, of course, when we export with Pano 2 VR, if I've set data, so if I've set GPS, I've set heading, if I've set altitude, if I've set the name, the description, all that sort of stuff, when we export from Pano 2 VR using either the convert button or I could have used the transformations output, um, we inject all the images with this information. So... Next time you come to use those images in a project, like what I'm doing, when you drag them in, it automatically, Pano 2 VR reads all of that metadata and it um, populates everything for me. If, um, on, on a separate note, if it wasn't for the fact that these had the metadata in them, if I was to drag them in, the thumbnails uh, address here would just give it the, um, uh, the, the, the file name until you go into user data and set it here. Okay. And actually, right, it's, yeah, right, okay. Before I move on with this, Pano 2 VR preferences. Um, let's go to images. Uh, is it? No, image metadata. So actually, we're actually reading the EXIF data, not the, meta, uh, the uh, sorry, the XMP, um, not the... Um, uh xf we're actually reading from the xf or xmp right i've got to get it right i've got to get it right in my head but you can see what we're reading in as we bring them into um pano 2 vr so we're reading both all right um but you can select what you want so if you've got pano i mean if you've got panoramas with gps data and you don't want them to have gps while well, you're bringing them into pano 2 vr you can just deselect it. So when you bring them in, Pano 2 VR won't read that data. But yeah, I just thought this was a handy little thing to show whilst we're here. On the Mac, it's obviously Pano 2 VR preferences. 
we and we open this up on the PC, it's file settings and you get to the same thing. Right. I, I hope that's answered that one. Yeah, I think it did. Thanks a lot. That's uh, that was off topic. And um, uh, just one final question. And I just well, I just want to at least uh, let Rick know. I'm sorry, I missed your question. He asked if you can separate menu the menu into submit items. And yes, you can. Yep. And um, I but I think we're running out of time. And um, uh, you can catch uh, Martin on our Facebook page or in our uh, uh, in email support at ggnome.com. Um, where else? The forums were we're available. <laughs> so if someone can catch the, this and there might even be a tutorial on on making. There is actually there's um, there's uh, if you go to the uh, tutorials, I can't remember where it is now, but I think it's um, it's basically it's, it's a video talking about nested cloners. There we go. Is, nested cloners, yeah. Which is which is the one that you want. So you so you have a cloner, and then you can have a cloner as a child of that. So one does the categories, and then the other one shows the thumbnails. So yeah, and also, um, whilst I'm here, just might as well show you, is in the um, built-in of Pano 2 VR are all of these. So here we've got this one, which is a thumbnail menu with two categories. Here is a thumbnail menu with categories, and we also have an accordion menu with categories. So if you want to sort of add those to a skin and pull them apart, see how they function, that's a good place to start. Okay. So uh, I think that's it. Thanks a lot, Martin. That was really, that was really no, great. Uh, well, thank you for coming in and doing the questions. Um, yeah, thanks, everybody, for joining me. Um, I hope you all found something of interest and uh, something new. And yeah, until next time, happy, happy Easter. Easter. <laughs> <laughs>